With more now on the amazing financial gear shift of General Motors from bankruptcy to record high profits, joining us now via Skype is Scott Rothbard from Seton Hall University's Department of Finance. Hello, Scott. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me on this morning. Thank you, Professor. Well, uh, let me ask you this. How did GM get to record annual profits just two years after it emerged from bankruptcy? By taking out record expenses in the business. That's one of the reasons why. Uh, another reason why is because the average fleet of cars in the United States is pretty much at an all-time record of over 11 years. Now, we are talking serious numbers. GM reported full year net of $7.6 billion. That's up from $4.6 billion it earned in 2010. Can you break that down a bit? Uh, well, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Um, but needless to say, we know that sales have increased, um, particularly overseas in China. Uh, the Chinese are actually um, uh, buying a lot of General Motors cars. Well, let me ask you this. You talked uh, uh, previously about um, the average American car being older, uh, I guess about 11 years old, you said? Uh, 11 two years, yes. So is this a cyclical thing that, that affects the auto industry? You have a majority of people now going out for new cars or buying maybe uh, uh, cars that are just maybe a year or two old, and then that stops for another five years. Is that what happens in the auto industry? Well, what happened was uh, GM and the rest of the auto industry got hit by both the cyclical um, as well as um, some uh, structural problems with the industry. Um, they had a, a bloated expense, um, they had bloated expense of the companies, um, they ran into a very deep recession, um, they needed to retool their businesses, they needed to get rid of a lot of the very high overhead. The amount of, of, of labor related costs that went to every car was tremendous. So they needed to scale back on, the, on their cost base so that they can actually sell cars at a more reasonable price to consumers. At the same time, they benefited by lower interest rates, um, which were spurred on by the economic uh, downturn that we have. But now what's happened is that, you know, we've seen that people have waited two and three years to buy new cars. The fleet has aged. So all these things are, are coming together now to help GM and Ford as well and Chrysler uh, begin to uh, increase their sales. So there are many variables here, but I wonder how does the Fed factor in, the fact that the Fed, federal government um, helped with $495 billion in loans. Some of that has been repaid, some still yet to be repaid. How does that all work out? Okay, let's understand something. The Fed does not have anything, have anything to do with the actual loans that were made to General Motors. Um, those loans actually came from the U.S. Treasury. Mm -hmm. All too often, people mix up the U.S. Treasury with the Federal Reserve. The Treasury actually is the bank for the country. They were the ones who lent um, uh, all the auto manufacturers, shall I say, the two auto manufacturers, Chrysler and GM money, uh, to help them get out of bankruptcy. The Federal Reserve, on the other hand, they control interest rates in this country. And what they've been able to do is move interest rates down to an all-time low of near zero. That helps uh, with consumers who want to borrow money to buy cars. So what we saw is we have a, a much physically sound General Motors, uh, Chrysler, and Ford. By the way, Ford did not borrow any money from the U.S. government. Um, and at the same time, banks are able to lend money to consumers to buy these cars at very low rates. In the past, one thing that hurt General Motors and Chrysler was that they were giving out 0% financing to consumers, but it was costing them something on the order of 4 or 5% to borrow the money. So they were losing 4 to 5% every year on a car that they sold. Now, because the Federal Reserve has interest rates which are close to zero, they're not losing money by financing cars to consumers. Let me ask you this. this. This whole bailout idea is becoming a political football, but as you see it, were the bailouts for the auto companies good or bad? Well, at, at, at the end, um, they were good. The question is whether or not uh, the U.S. government should have bailed them out or whether or not they should have gone through the normal uh, bankruptcy process that any other company is going through or has gone through, uh, much like Kmart did in the past. and. Um, 
uh, Eastman Karnak is doing right now. Uh, and, and that's where the political argument uh, really is coming to a head. So are, are we talking in terms of jobs, this is how this has been couched, in terms of jobs saved and jobs created, would you say this has also been a good thing? I think, I think it definitely has saved some jobs. Um, but probably those jobs may have been saved as well if we went through the normal process. But the timing of that savings is something that may have been brought forward because the U.S. government, uh, with their deep pockets, was able to come in and finance the bankruptcy. Okay, one word, quick answer here. Does this factor into the GOP elections? That, because Mitt Romney felt uh, that the private sector should have jumped in on this. Do you think that will end up being an issue? Well, it, it is an issue because they're making it an issue, but I think at the end of the day it really isn't an issue. Right now they're all campaigning in Michigan, and Michigan certainly is the heart of the automobile industry. Right. So they're going to try to appeal to uh, the people of Michigan uh, as to why it would have been a better idea to have not saved General Motors and, and Chrysler the way they did, and they would have done it a different way. Better I think way. Really, yeah. it's really financial semantics at the end of the day. Gotcha. So I'm sure we'll he be hearing more about it. Thank you so much, for Professor. You're welcome. All right, we'll change lanes.